Today's video is all about the Emacs Eco 2 motors. Look how pretty they are. But can they race? Let's find out. Drone Racing Academy. About a year and a half ago, Emacs came out with the Ecos. And for $12, the performance almost match some of the more premium motors as you can see in one of my earlier videos where we compared the Ecos against more premium motors. That's a great showing. But now, Emacs has come up with the Eco 2, which they say it's an upgrade over the Eco in many, many ways. And first of all, aesthetics wise, it looks purely incredible. Look how shiny this is compared to the Ecos. And it's also really, really smooth. It's got the whole smooth bell design which seems to be pretty popular these days. Um, and overall, build quality is fantastic. So let's take a look at the tech specs to see what uh, makes this special. So this runs also on a nine millimeter bearing, which is good because you want the larger bearings. Some of the older designs had eight millimeter bearings and those were really quite fragile and break really easily. So with this bearing size, um, we should expect this to last relatively well. The second piece is this motor uses a steel shaft. Now, that's pretty common for lower cost motors. Um, it really, there's no drawback to a steel shaft versus a, a more premium titanium shaft from a strength perspective. In fact, the steel shaft is actually stronger than titanium. The drawback mainly being that it weighs more. You're gonna be seeing that as a common theme on this motor as we go forward. The other piece too is that it uses multi-stranded windings see that here multi-stranded windings you can't see i'll give you a better shot of this later it, it uses multi-stranded windings over here you can see the, the wires relatively thin and what that does is it makes it cheaper to manufacture but in terms of performance it should actually be quite close to the thick strength the thick single stranded windings that are used on more premium motors lastly um the, it comes with about 12 Probably about 12 millimeters, uh, 12 centimeters of wire, give or take. Yeah, about 12 centimeters of wire. That's pretty standard. Um, so let's take a look at the specs. Now, this is a 2400 kV. Uh, on my build, I used a 1900 kV because that's what I usually run for 6S. I wanted to test this for 4S as well. And we're going to do a comparison test in 4S and 6S on this motor uh, in a future video. So in terms of weighing, um, this one, the 2400 kV actually came in at 36.0 grams, whereas the 1900 came in at 36.4. So slight weight difference there between the two. And keep in mind that's with 12 centimeters of wire. Now, when I build my quad, so let me show you really quick over here. This is my build on the Floss 3, um, built using the HD, HGLRC F74, uh, F745 stack. I really like that stack, it's really, really good, um, rock solid. I cut off about three to four centimeters of wire and that brings me down to 36 grams on each motor for the 1900 kV. Now, 36 grams for those of you that race knows that that's a pretty heavy motor. Um, and it seems like that's the case for the materials that were chosen for this motor as well as certain design elements that leads to it being a bit heavier than you would expect. For racing, every gram matters and a lot of times we're trying to push a 260 to 280 gram setup. With a motor this heavy, that might be a little more challenging, but that being said, um, we're looking at about a four gram difference per motor, give or take, compared to premium motors. There's some premium ultralight motors where you might be pushing the six gram difference. So you're talking about a 20 gram difference overall for the quad, which is not insignificant, but it's not a deal breaker um, as I will show later. This quad that I built is actually a little bit on the heavier side. It's about 320 grams with props. Not the lightest racing quad around definitely, but the performance was really good. And I'm gonna show you in my field test later. So yes, it's not gonna be lightest motor. It's not gonna be comparable to the top end motor in terms of weight, but for the price and for the segment that they're targeting, I think that's a very reasonable compromise. Now, 
Let's take a look at some measurements. I'm going to pull you closer for this. Now, as you go up to close up, we're going to notice some interesting design choices, and I'm going to start measuring these things for you. The first one being that if you look at the top, can you see this? There's a pretty big gap from the top of the motor to the actual windings. And that that's, you can see from this part right here, this part, it's relatively thick compared to other motors. And that leaves a bit of an air gap on the top. Now, you're gonna hear a lot about air gap when people describe motors. That's not the gap that they're talking about. The air gap that people talk about is actually on the bottom. And that's the air gap, right? Between the, the magnets and the stator. And you can see over here, the air gap is actually really tight. And this is comparable to the top end motors. So this is really good. Now air gap, tight air gap just means that you're gonna have the biggest magnetic field possible on the stator to give you the most power in an efficient way. So that's really good. And you also see that they're using curved magnets. This N, uh, I believe N52H magnets. So they're, they're the curved magnets that are high temperature resistant. So these are good parts that they're using. Um, so the really interesting difference here is this kind of curved bell that results in it being thicker, oops, sorry, thicker than normal. Let me just bring the quad back up. Okay, thicker than normal. So if you look over here, when we measure from the bottom to where you put your prop, you see that that's about 20, 20 millimeters, give or take, right? On a standard motor, that usually measures out to be about 18 millimeters. That's a two millimeter increase of material here to here, right? And that's what's accounting for that two millimeter difference that we're talking about and also results in this kind of a gap on the top here. Now I talked to Emacs about why they made this design choice because I was very curious. Um, you know, is there a reason for this design choice apart from you know making it look really nice? And it does, it looks amazing because there's a nice curve to it. And they mentioned that you know that they have a little bit extra material here for durability reasons when you hit your bell. So we'll see if that actually is the case when I start crashing it a lot more. Um, for now, I haven't broken anything and durability looks good. So that's an interesting design choice that they made. So another effect of this design choice is that your prop's gonna be sitting a little higher than you're normally used to uh, when you're using this motor. So that's definitely an interesting choice there. The other part too is that they have this little guard that comes above here that covers the wires um, for durability reasons to make sure that there is no way your bell can rub against your wires. I think it's an interesting design choice. Um, most of the motors that I run do not have that. And honestly, I've never had an issue where your motor bell is rubbing against the wires. And if you do have that problem, you have bigger issues anyways. <laughs> so I, I think it's good, especially because this is aimed at the more kind of beginner to intermediate segment to have a bit more safeguards um, built around durability. I think that's a reasonable compromise um, and that makes sense, right? So all these things, the little guard, uh, the little extra bit of material up here and just uh, using a steel uh, shaft, all these adds together to make the this motor uh, a little bit heavier uh, and coming in at about 36 grams. But like I said before, for the segment that they're targeting, I personally think that's a very reasonable compromise. So that's the bench test right here, oh, bench review right here. Uh, overall, I think this is a very worthy upgrade to the original Ecos. They look absolutely incredible. And if you look at my finished quad, you can see it, it really looks really nice. Um, that kind of gunmetal-ish color is quite incredible. And if you take a look at the motor finish, this quad was the one that I used in my field test and I crashed the crap out of it. And it looks really good. It's still really shiny. There are no major marks. Everything looks really good. So with that said, let's take you to the field test and we are going to show you me running this quad and compare against how it felt when I ran my usual main quad, which are running T-Motor F60 motors, which as you know, are much, much more expensive. So see you at the field. So I'm on the field right now and I'm going to be testing the Eco 2s on my latest build. Very exciting. Um, yeah, again, from my previous commentary, 
pretty motors, a little heavy, so I wonder how it's gonna fly. Um, that's the one, and I'm testing against my typical usual build that I'm very used to, uh, which is running the T Motor F60. Obviously, a much more expensive motor, so not the most fair test, but if this can even keep up a little bit, I think that's gonna be a pretty good story. Um, so, let's get to flying. Look, Superman's like, yeah, come on! <laughs> Definitely strong, straight line speed. Oh, look. Dude, look at it. Oh, God. Yeah, that's not going to that. Demon 17-6. Demon 172. Alright, I'm paying 17 consistently on this quad now. That was the fastest I went through the tunnel to that orbit though. Oh, yeah. Oh, way too fast. And we're back. So, as you can see from the flight videos, this flew really, really nicely. I was hitting about 17 to 18 seconds on this build, and on my main build with the F60 Pros, I was hitting about a 16 second lap on that trek. Now, that's about a 1 to 2 second difference. That's probably largely attributable to the fact that I am super used to my main build, obviously, and not as much as this one. Um, the weight's different, um, the motor felt a little bit different, so all those things attributed to probably a major part of the time difference, which means that given enough time and practice on this quad, I could probably hit a very similar lap time, which is amazing for a motor that costs $12. Now, how does it feel? Um, I gave the Ecos very high praise in my last video that they were really smooth, they were very linear, very controllable, and all of those characteristics carry on in the Eco 2. They felt really, really nice, very smooth, the bearings sounded amazing, and everything just del delivers gobs of power in a very smooth way. The only thing I would say about this, and this is only apparent when I go back and forth between this quad and my F60s, is that there is a slight bit of delay to when the power kicks in. So the best I can describe it is it's kind of like turbo lag if you're a car person, where basically you can step on the accelerator, or in this case, push on the throttle, and there's a split second delay between when you request it to when the power actually comes in. It's, it's not a big gap, it's just a very, very slight minute difference that's noticeable to me, mostly because I'm super used to flying my quad. And if I flew more on this quad, I will probably be able to get used to it. Um, but that being said, it does exist. Now, why is that the case? My hypothesis is that the bells on this motor is slightly on the heavier side, um, which obviously results in a bit more inertia than the motors that I'm used to. And what that really means is it takes a little bit more energy to spin this up because of the extra weight. And that results in it spinning up ever so slightly slower than the other more premium high-end ultralight motors. Is that a deal breaker? Absolutely not. In fact, I think unless you're a, a racer that's super tuned to one build, you probably won't even notice that it's there. If you're a beginner, intermediate, which this, honestly, this is probably the target segment for that group, you will not notice the difference at all and these would serve you perfectly. Uh, for the target segment that they're going after, I actually think the compromises that they made in terms of adding more durability at the expense of weight makes a lot of sense. These motors took a hell of a beating when I took this out in the first day just because I wasn't used to how it flew and I flew them really fast and I rammed a lot of gates at high speed and they came back looking perfect. Um, the motors still spin really smoothly, the bearings sounded amazing all day and the, the finish was untouched. I don't know what kind of anodizing magic they did on this, but the, the really beautiful finish was completely unscathed even after I rammed many, many gates throughout all of my packs. So I think that this is a great motor for any beginner to intermediate to even someone that's uh, a bit better but wants to save some money. This is an amazing motor for the price. Now onto the design choices that they made, especially on the kind of the curved bell piece. Did I notice a difference? Not really. Um, is it 
going to be more durable because of it? I honestly don't know. I, like I said, I did crash it many, many times, and it's fine. But it's always hard to determine durability without long-term testing. So I will keep flying this, and I'll report back if I have any issues. Chances are, though, from the way it looks and the way it feels when I look at a build quality, I think this might be very, very tough, which is kind of what we're looking for, especially on a beginner intermediate motor. So in conclusion, these motors for $12, and I repeat, $12, and an incredible value, and I think that one of the best motors out there for the price range. And it punches definitely above its weight, even into the mid or even high end range. It doesn't quite reach the same level of performance because of the weight, but for most people, you will not notice a difference at all. And um, this becomes a really, really good buy for you. So if you're starting out or if you're looking for something that's a bit more durable at at a good price, these are a really good deal for you. Um, and I highly recommend it. I'm gonna do more long-term testing on this. And if I find anything else, I will let you know. Um, the next test that we're gonna be doing on these motors is a 4S versus 6S test, where we're gonna see if 6S is really that much better than 4S, or are they pretty much the same for the first half of the pack? Let's find out. So. With that, with all that said, these are really, really good motors. Um, go out, get them, and uh, let me know what you think. Stay safe, happy flying, take care.